Hi, everyone. We are going to go ahead and get started with our animals, ethics, and the attorney panel now. This is a fast-paced, interactive discussion that makes learning ethics fun. Um, this panel is always a hit, and that is largely due to our wonderful panelist, animal rights lawyer and professor Russ Mead. Russ is the Shared Earth Foundation Visiting Professor at Lewis and Clark Law School and author of many books, including Step-by-Step -Step Legislative Drafting for Advocates, Grassroots Animal Legislation, Farm Animal Law Readings and Materials, Trial Advocacy in Animal Law, and Nonprofit Animal Law. Russ, I will now pass it over to you. Well, thank you. So I have the uh, first task is to let you have a bit of understanding of how we're going to do this. So this is going to be interactive. And usually in CLEs, and particularly in one on ethics, uh, somebody speaks, you listen. This time, you're going to be discussing things. So as tough as it is, we need to consolidate so that you're just not talking to the one person next to you. So if there's three or four people at a table and there's two, scoot. I don't care where you are in the room, but th there needs to be at least five people, let's say, at each table, or this isn't going to work and it's not going to be any fun. And how can you say fun and uh, lawyer ethics all in the same sentence, but that's what we're going to try to do. So this is, I added it up, this is the 24th time I have given one of these presentations, and I write a new one for each one, so you're going to be getting a new scenario about a fictitious lawyer named Billy Miller, Billy Miller is an animal rights uh, person, activist, much most like us, and she always forgets to do the right thing. In fact, if there's a wrong way to do it, Billy usually does it that way. And the reason I do this is to, in a funny way, point out that as lawyers, we're still lawyers, even if we are helping animals. And so that's the overall driving part of this presentation. So with that, we're going to start. Meet Billy, Billy Miller a brilliant lawyer specializing in election law and has a love for animals. Billy lives year round in the picturesque summer resort town of Gold Lake. Billy lives with a red eared slider turtle named Jeremiah. Now these turtles are gonna become a big part of this story. Billy and Jeremiah go everywhere together. There's an animal rights nonprofit named All Species Advocates is on a mission to champion the rights of wild animals. They fight for wild animals to live free from human interference. The group aims to pass a groundbreaking new law that grants these magnificent creatures the right to exist undisturbed in their natural habitats. Billy Miller attended a town meeting called by all species advocates, again, this nonprofit. The forum was buzzing with passionate discussions about proposed wildlife animal rights ordinance that they were about to propose. The group wants a law saying that in the town of Gold Lake, wildlife has the right to live free from human interference. The executive director, Randy Troy, saw Billy in the crowd and asked, Billy, can the town of Gold Lake even pass something like this? Billy answered with authority in their voice that Gold Lake can pass any law they choose. Of course, Billy didn't really know the answer to this question but Billy wanted to seem knowledgeable in front of all of the townspeople that she lived. Simply put, Billy was faking it. After the meeting, Billy had a beer with the executive director of All Species Advocates. Billy's red-eared slider turtle, Jeremiah, sat on the bar looking for flies when they discussed, discussed the strategies of how to pass this. The director asked Billy if the mayor would be likely to give support to the ordinance. Billy responded, well, I know the mayor pretty well. I worked on the mayor's campaign and I have given the mayor quite a bit of support over the years. Let me go talk to them about it and see what they think. Billy takes Jeremiah home and posts the following on Facebook. There's a lot of buzz about wild animals getting animal rights in our gold lake. What do you all think? Someone named Trudy2000 posted a question. Hey, Billy, are turtles considered wildlife or are they domestic pets? I wonder if the turtles would be wildlife under this new law. Billy responded, good question, Trudy, Trudy 2000. Turtles are wildlife when they live in the wild. They are pets when they live in your home. The next day, Billy drives to Walmart 
for some food for Jeremiah, her turtle. Well, in the checkout line, Billy runs into Pat Randolph. Now, Pat runs a group called Indigenous Animals First. So a second group, Indigenous Animals First. This group wants to preserve native wildlife species, but does not want to protect any invasive wildlife species. So they don't like the invasive ones. Pat tells Billy that the nonprofit, Indigenous to Animals First, supports indigenous wildlife having rights, but no rights to those pesky invasive species. This group hates invasive species. Billy mentions that Billy is going to talk to the mayor about wildlife animal rights in Gold Lake. Pat then asks Billy to pass on to the mayor that indigenous animals first supports the new law, but only for indigenous animals. Then Billy didn't work on this for about four weeks because Billy took her pet turtle to Burning Man. So I, I'm hoping that you see that there might be some rules of professional responsibility issues and what Billy has done. And what we're going to do now is spend about five minutes or so discussing it, and then we will come back. I will take comments from the floor and we will discuss the rules of professional responsibility and how Billy is in compliance or not in compliance with some of those. And we have, of course, a large audience at home this year. And I understand that you all uh, at home will be able to uh, talk amongst yourselves in the chat box, which we are monitoring. So go ahead, talk amongst yourselves. What, uh, what do you think about what Billy's up to? So I'm gonna check back in and let's see what we found, but how about the folks that are watching uh, from all corners of the earth? Have, have there, are there any questions that, that seem to be rolling around through the chat? Why don't you just yell it out and I'll repeat it. I'm wondering, can Billy give advice to a nonprofit when she is just an election lawyer? Ah, so just, so the, the question is, 
one of confidence. Can Billy be giving this advice? There's a whole question whether that's advice or not, but can Billy be answering this question when she's an election lawyer and she's sitting here talking about whatever area of law that, that question is? So the answer to that question is like most of us, you know, we can work on things other than things within our specific area that we spend most of our time making a living. Uh, but you have to be competent. So Billy can certainly get up to speed on any, any existing type of law and give advice on it. But in this case, you know, Billy was winging it. She had no clue. And so she was violating a rule of professional responsibility 1.1 on competence. So you need to take some time, find out the answers to things. And then once you've done that, then of course you can, you can give advice, but not so much in this case. So what's, uh, what's something else we see this time from the floor? Yes. Got it. So I'll repeat the question uh, or the comment is, is actually quite a bit in that answer. Good job. So is there a conflict of interest between the two entities is, is one side to that comment. Um, and the other side is, is there any kind of, a, any kind of attorney client relationship? Has it been formed? Now, this, this should scare you a lot because there has been an attorney client relationship formed. Here's all it takes. And so this is something to remember because a lot of lawyers don't realize this. All it takes for you to have a client is for a client to ask you to provide some type of legal services, including advice or asking a question. And you agree, you don't even have to do it. You agree to do the work. In this case, answering a question is doing the work. So simply by answering that question, congratulations, Billy, you have a new client. So does that scare any of you? It should, I mean, think of the times we're in bar association meetings and we're talking about whatever and there's questions asked, there's, there's comments made. If it fits that description, you've got a new client. And of course, the issue with that is then all of those duties of having a client come along, record keeping, uh, checks for conflicts, you know, keeping the records for five years after you end representation, on and on and on, simply by answering that off the cuff question. So, that's one of those things to remember. Don't be creating these relationships. Now, how about the fact that there are two different um, entities here and Billy's trying to work with both of them. How does that strike some of you or any of you? Good, bad. As a volunteer, you can do whatever you want. Down, I've got experienced hands in the back saying thumbs down. Yes, it's, it's thumbs down. Whenever, whenever you have a, a conflict, whenever the client's interests aren't aligned, uh, you can't represent them both unless you jump through a lot of hoops, unless you go ahead and let everyone know what those conflicts are, they sign off on it. But I will just tell you from decades of experience that when you have two nonprofits that are both working in the same field or on the same issue, the likelihood that they agree on everything is about zero. I mean, even animals that are, the, that are of the same species, nonprofits trying to help the same species of animals, they will usually have differing approaches, which almost always puts you in a conflict, which means what to Billy? I mean, this is, this is a problem. Should Billy be running around trying to help these different organizations by, by giving advice? And the short answer is, this is something that animal rights lawyers, animal advocates do all of the time. And you, you need to realize that if you do that, you're probably running afoul of these uh, either confidentiality laws or in this case, uh, rules of professional responsibility or the conflicts. So that again, surprises a lot of people who seem to think that, oh, if I'm working on a project, I'm a volunteer, I can just go help anywhere I want. Yeah, comment, yeah. Okay, uh, what's something else we see? 
You see anything else? Billy has a personal interest conflict as well. Billy has a personal interest conflict as well. Um, interesting enough, because of the uh, because of her pet, if, if nothing else, is exactly uh, I created this so that she would have a turtle that was um, could be a wild animal and could be a pet and could be indigenous or may not be indigenous depending on where this place is. So Billy Billy's got at least that conflict and probably some others. All right, we're going to continue. Billy went to the tractor supply to pick up food for a feral cat colony that Billy feeds. Billy spotted Tony Raw in the tool aisle. Tony was not only Billy's enemy, but also the manager of the notorious Gold Lake Hunting Club. Gold Lake Hunting Club was infamous for its annual wildlife killing contest. Participants would see how many animals and the targeted species they could kill on a chosen weekend. This year, the invasive species, because of where they live, the red-eared slider turtle, the same as Billy's pet, is in the crosshairs of the Gold Lake Hunting Club's annual killing contest. With veins popping out of their forehead, Billy yelled, Tony, you must stop planning that weekend tournament where you intend to kill those red-eared slider turtles. Tony responded arrogantly, what do you think you can do about it, you damn animal rights freak? And Billy, now furious, yelled back, if you have that contest, I'll make sure that everyone knows that your mother secret, secretly loves the taste of horse meat. Tony's mother had eaten horse meat as a child when they lived in Paris decades ago. However, Tony's mother had long since abandoned eating horse meat once they moved away from France. After having a calming pumpkin spice latte, Billy went to the city hall to see the mayor. Hello, Billy, Mayor Bennett greeted Billy with a warm smile. What can I do for you today? Billy started by handing the mayor a $100 bill that was folded up into an origami shape of a turtle. Billy said, this is a gift from your loyal supporter, Jeremy. That's Billy's turtle. The mayor collected the origami, we'll call it that, and said, thank, thank both of you. Um, and then the mayor put the gift into the desk drawer. Billy spoke. Mayor, two groups are working on a wildlife animal issue in Gold, Gold Lake. The nonprofit All Species Advocates want Gold Lake to pass a law saying wildlife has the right to live free from human interference. But then there's this other group, Indigenous Animals First, who only want to protect native wildlife species. Then there's those bloodthirsty hunters of the Gold Lake Hunting Club. They do not want to protect wildlife and are planning a killing contest to kill as many uh, slider turtles as possible. The mayor spoke next. I've been following this debate, Billy. I don't see the council voting to pass a law promoting animal rights for wildlife, so I'm sorry. And that killing, but that killing contest in the Gold Lake Hunting Club makes the city look bad. You might get some traction on that by banning the turtle killing contest, but I think that's about all you're gonna get. Billy nodded understandingly, but could not help feeling disappointed and, and left. Then Billy sat on their porch and decided to update Billy's blog, Billy's news from Golden Lake. The blog was Billy's attempt to promote the small town and bring attention to important animal issues. Billy posted, I went to see the mayor today. We discussed the wildlife protection ordinance. I laid out the approach of two different nonprofits around here, all species advocates and the indigenous animals first nonprofits. We also discussed those despicable red slider tilling contest that Gold Lake Hunting Club wants to hold. Now the mayor doesn't think that the wildlife animals rights ordinance will pass, not for all species and not for indigenous species only. But I got the impression that you despicable Golden Lake Hunting Club members might be without your animal slaughter tournament this year. Billy's attempt to shed light on this diverse issue of the town folk absolutely backfired with this post. First, the hunters came after them. They argued vehemently about their right to hunt. Both animal rights groups were also mad at Billy. Both felt slighted by having their positions co-mingled in Billy's presentation to the mayor. In addition, all species advocates were angry that Billy had posted the meeting results privately rather than coming to them in private, or publicly rather than coming to them in private. Frustration welled up within Billy as they read through angry comment after angry comment. 
Even Billy's pet turtle, Jeremiah, was attacked by the posters. Tired of being caught in the crossfire between the groups, Billy posted, I'm sick and tired of being attacked for trying to help the animals. I'm done helping any of you with anything animal related. Billy picked up their pet turtle, Jeremiah, and headed towards the lakefront with more than one PBR in the Yeti cooler. All right, take a break, figure out what you can see that Billy might have done wrong. Thank 
All right, let's go ahead and bring it back around. So Alyssa, anything coming in from the uh, folks watching remotely? Yes, we are getting a lot of questions about what is going on with Billy's origami turtle $100 bill that went to the mayor. Got it. That That's one of the more interesting things that I slide in here because it's, I mean, it sure could be maybe even a crime or it might even be allowed. I mean, it's this is a political office. Politicians certainly have fundraisers as we hear about in the news all of the time these days. And so the analysis of this is going to be, uh, is, is this a crime under whatever laws are applicable here? Now, the thing that makes this suspect is that it gets, uh, it's not a check, it's, it's not by a debit card, it's, it's folded up and it's, in, and it's in the form of this art form, which you know, could also just be a small token gift. And so it's ambiguous for a reason so that we can talk through this. So clearly there's an issue here. Uh, and then also uh, the language was, you know, the turtle is giving it to you. And of course, turtles probably didn't know that they were giving a hundred dollar bill since they don't really know what to do with money other than try to eat it. So, um, so, so there could well be an issue here and, and, it, and it falls under uh, rule 8.4 for, for misconduct uh, if, it's, if it's a crime, even if it's not a crime, but it's something that's... Uh, just feels kind of dishonest, you know, that, that can run afoul of rule 8.4. So there's, there's a lot of something going on with slipping the mayor a hundred bucks before you, you talk to him about something going on. Good, good to the folks. Uh, what else did we see? Oh, yes. Okay. No, don't be embarrassed by it because the because the answer is not going to be very satisfying. The answer is it it all depends on on what the, the local laws are and how they're interpreted. If that was some type of blackmail, you know, and then if it's a crime, of course it it trips in. But there is a piece here that that just also that jumps out at you that a lot of folks don't realize, and that is Billy threatened to do something to a third party. So we need to be careful about this. And I'm, I'm trying to bring this to the forefront. It's rule 4.4 uh, and it says that lawyers can't do anything with a substantial purpose other than to uh, embarrass, delay or burden a third person. And so this threat against the person's mother is a, a straight up violation, violating the rights of a third person. And that's something to keep in mind when when we start hearing people threaten it could well be a violation of this rule even if it's not some kind of a uh you know extortion or or whatever else but it it certainly is a violation of this rule i mean the mother doesn't have anything to do with this but yet they're caught up in the middle of it so that billy can try to to put some leverage on the president of this hunting club so you were on it but a slightly different nuance. It's because of the third, the third party. What else we see?
Okay, good. So we got, so very skillfully brought up um, 1.2 by not following a, a client's directive. There's a lot involved in that whole interchange. I mean, you got to look at this as, is a direct conflict. How do you, how do you represent somebody to pass something that's broader and then represent somebody else that says, no, we're giving up the broad thing and we want the narrow thing. Um, there's, I mean, there's just clearly a, a conflict in there that, that Billy has, uh, I think is, is run up against. So, so yes, that whole thing is a problem. Um, and then in terms of talking about it, there's, there's all kinds of problems with, with talking about it. There's confidentiality. I mean, they, she shouldn't be talking about any conversation she had on behalf of a client out to the world in a, in a blog post without their permission. And then there's also a, a more subtle one. There's a confidentiality issue that I'm going to spend a little time on. It's rule 1.6. And it's talking about information that you receive from a client is, is confidential unless you have permission to give it to somebody else. And so most, I won't say most lawyers, a lot of lawyers don't realize that when you have information about your client, even if it's public information, even if it's something that you can read in the newspaper, you still have to keep that confidential unless you have a approval from your client. So I'm gonna pass on a best practice that for the practicing lawyers, I think most of you are, that you should keep in mind. You might wanna, in your engagement contract, even talk about what information you agree to keep confidential and what information the client agrees to allow you to share. So it could be something like uh, the lawyer can share any public information you know, with, with others. And of course, you can always share information with those you need to share it with for the representation. If you need to report it to somebody, you need it you know, for an investigator, you need it for something else. I mean, that's, that's a whole other thing. But you might wanna think about putting in something to help you work around 1.6 just in your daily life so that you don't have to keep everything about that client you know, confidential. Uh, so keep that in mind. And there's a lot of controversy. There's a lot of writings in the, in the ethics uh, rules these days about that. What, what else do we see? Yes. Good. Right. So it's so to read out to the folks that uh, can't hear us in the room, even knew the rule number. I'm pretty impressed. 1.16. I'm very impressed. Rule 1.16 deals with ending representation the things you need to do. I mean, there's a list of things you need to do. Um, I, in my own little notes here, you've got to return files. Here's the big one. You need to let the client have enough time to find counsel to continue with whatever else they're doing. And there's no unearned fees here, but you have to return those. I mean, you just can't quit, you know, over a couple of PBRs at the lake and on, on your internet blog. I mean, that's just, it just feels wrong and it is wrong and it's off the scale wrong. Uh, but whenever you do quit a representation, and here's the big thing to remember, even if it's a volunteer representation. So that's the big emphasis in this presentation is all of those rules of professional responsibility that, that you know that you have to follow when you're representing that paid client, um, they're here whenever you're volunteering. I mean, the, the main thing I'd like to pass on to the folks here and to the folks at home is when we're volunteering for nonprofits or to help the animals, we're still lawyers and we still have to follow all of these rules. And that's something that so many just, just kind of pass by thinking, well, I'm helping the animals and you know, I'm just volunteering. I'm not really representing anybody. Well, you are representing somebody after we saw that first segment. I think it's time to, it is time to move on. Let me take a quick look. All right. Every year, the town has Golden Lake Days, a celebration that brought the community together amidst carnival rides, food tents, vegan donuts, and a beer garden for those seeking some liquid refreshment. Billy strolled around aimlessly with Jeremiah, of course, a turtle, riding in a picnic basket. Billy stopped by the All Species Associates information table. 
The tensions from the mayor's meeting had blown over. Hey, Billy, can you go over to the Walmart and pick us up a 25 foot extension cord? Asked Kim, a board member. Billy said, sure. Kim handed a $100 bill from the donation box to Billy. Billy once again folded it into an origami shape of a turtle and put the bill in their wallet. At Walmart, Billy put, picked up the extension cord and some lettuce as a snack for Jeremiah and put them into Billy's basket. Billy paid for the items with the origami $100 bill. Back at the Golden Lake days, Billy spotted a group of passionate animal lovers congregating in the beer garden. The conversation got lively with the upcoming turtle hunting contest organized by the Gold Lake Hunting Club. Some angry advocates suggested slashing the tires of any hunter who participated in the killing contest. Billy felt compelled to chime in. This is what Billy said. You better be cool, Billy cautioned. Some hunting rigs have dash cams that record everything. You better not get filmed carrying around a 12 inch Bowie knife when those tires go flat. As the day turned to evening, Billy found themselves sharing beers, laughs, and even deep philosophical conversations with Kim. Kim was a board member from the All Species Advocates. They listened to the music by the renowned Jimmy Buffett tribute band, Mark Wood and his Parrot Head Band. After the crowd-pleasing final song of the evening, Why Don't We Get Drunk, Billy and Kim returned to Billy's place that night played out like you would expect in a Jimmy Buffett song. Yes. Go ahead and talk amongst yourselves and see what we might have here. I 
All right, let's go ahead and bring it back around. We'll discuss this final segment. And then at the end, there'll be a, a brief conclusion on how it all ends. So how about the folks that are watching remotely? Did they see anything wrong with what Billy was up to? Yeah, so we're wondering, um, is Billy allowed to buy that extension cord? Got it. What was so, going on with that? So the question is, 
when Billy's at this event and a client asks them to buy an extension cord, hands them some money, is Billy allowed to do that? What's wrong with that? Well, I mean, certainly as lawyers, we advance costs all of the time for client expenses. I mean, the way we're supposed to handle it is if, if we buy something on their behalf, we keep track of it, we bill them for it, you know, they go ahead and, and remit it to us with, with the next bill. Um, but here's what's, what's problematic about taking cash. And there's, and there's a best practice that goes along with this. So as soon as Billy took that cash, a whole series of duties launched. The duty to record keep, meaning literally, you know, put it down in some books somewhere. You, you need to not commingle it and you need to safeguard it all around the hundred dollars. Now, I set this up so maybe it was not commingled because it was folded into this shape, but it certainly got commingled when Billy took that money and laid it on the counter and paid for uh, Billy's pet turtles snack. Uh, and so, you know, that's a, that's a problem. So let me give you a best practice that I picked up years ago and, and, and it just works. Just don't ever take cash advances from your clients for anything. It, instead, if you're in one of these volunteer situations and as lawyers, we're often asked to do things because we're respected and like to run to the store and do something. We've got the time, we wanna help out. Just, just put it on a debit card or credit card and then get reimbursed. And now you're totally you know, complying with everything. There's also something that's really kind of scary about the way Billy did this, that most people lose track of. There's a requirement, there's a severe requirement for record keeping whenever you're dealing with client funds. And it lasts even after you, you, know, you, you stop the representation. So, uh, I mean, I'm sure Billy wasn't thinking, oh, now I need to go put in some accounting records. I need to keep the accounting records. I need to safeguard the accounting records. You know, I need you to do all of that. So just don't do that. It, it works really well. Buy it, get reimbursed. This works cleaner. Good. What else do we see? Yes, in the back. Yes, so we don't know, it's this fact pattern is silent as to if Billy has malpractice insurance or, or not. I mean, I think most of us have malpractice insurance to cover whatever we're doing you know, the, the rest of the time. And if these are clients, it would probably carry over. But you're right, if in certain states, if you don't have malpractice insurance, you have to disclose it. What else do we see? Yes. Potential sexual relations with how the night ended, whether the person considered like the right representative of the organization that was triggered out to work day to legal matters. Right. So there's two aspects to that. Uh, and I always try to find a cute way to describe it, but it's it clearly is, uh, I'm intending this to be a, a sexual relationship. So there's the one question of is this person a client? Is a board member you know, a client, and they may be, and they or they may not be. Um, so it is an issue that you'd really need to parse uh, carefully. I mean, if you're if you're interacting with somebody on the legal matters, then I mean, they they clearly fall into the client category. If it's somebody else, maybe maybe not. But here's the part of the rule that a lot of people don't realize. So I want to I want to give it to you. This is rule uh, one point. Uh, 1.8 J and it's a lawyer shall not have sexual relations with a client unless a consensual relationship existed between them before the client lawyer relationship commenced. So that's a piece that a lot of people don't realize. So if this was somebody who Billy had been having a sexual relationship for a long time, you know, there'd be nothing wrong with this. And it's, the more that I've studied this, and I've given these presentations all over the country, some states don't have this. And that always kind of brings a chuckle about, oh yeah, well you can do that in you know, Louisiana or, or whatever, but then, which is one of those states. But then I was up in Canada giving a presentation and 
there's a, a very skilled uh, person in this area. Canada doesn't have it either. And then they explained why. They said that there's enough other rules of professional responsibility that would be violated in an inappropriate relationship. And then, then you don't have to worry about all of the appropriate times when you have sex with clients. And think about it. If you're representing a spouse or a partner in a traffic ticket, uh, you know, does, does it fit the definition of having sex with a client? Yeah. So that's why this has got this nuance on it that a lot of us don't realize. We all say sex with clients, wrong, bad, can't do it. And the real answer is, is, a lot, is, is a lot more complicated. So we throw that out. There's one last thing. Anyone see? Yeah. Yes, that's the last one. And, and I don't bring this one up tongue in cheek. I will tell you that this comes up and will come up for the people in this room. When tempers are hot, oftentimes when alcohol is involved, people start discussing you know, ways to get at the people that animal rights lawyers might consider evil. And so there are often conversations like this. I think in jest, maybe not, who knows? So there is a best practice when it comes to this. When you come across this, you need to best practice, tell people don't violate the law and stand up and leave. Immediately just leave. Because if you try to nuance this and, and give advice that's helping them not break the law, which you can probably do, all of that's gonna get pretty muddy if somebody's tires get sliced or if, if there's something happened that's illegal and you were at the event when it was planned, this is bad for you. So my recommendation is say, don't, don't do this, don't violate the law, Gra grab your coat and go. Because then you can say, yes, it came up, that was what I said, and then I left. And then the likelihood of you being able to protect yourself if this comes up, and this would be really serious, you know, to participate in the planning of a, of a crime, um, it will help you, it will help you. All right, we're gonna say how it all ends. So this is the happy part, right? How, what, what all happens here? Billy's dedication to the community service was rewarded. Billy received the Outstanding Community Service Award from the Animal Bar section of the County Bar. After a strong campaign from the Gold Lake Elementary School, Gold Lake did pass a proclamation the Gold Lake acknowledges that wildlife has inalienable rights, but the declaration was silent on what those rights were. With Gold Lake's elementary school newfound appreciation for wildlife, Billy's turtle, Jeremiah, was elected as the school mascot. The old school motto of home of the fighting bees transformed into home of the friendly turtles. And from there, the message of kindness and compassion was spread throughout the land. So, this is the end of the presentation. We have, uh, if I'm going to give a final thing to remember, please remember when you're volunteering, you are still lawyers and you are still bound by the rules of professional responsibility.